big guns of the <laughs> In 1939, Albert Einstein and many other European scientists living as refugees in the United States sent an urgent letter to President Franklin D. Roosevelt. The letter informed the President of the atomic threats of the Axis powers, which included Germany, Italy, Japan, and later other nations. These European scientists feared that Hitler and the Germans had been working on nuclear weapons since the 1930s and urged the President to set up a research committee to create an atomic weapon. After two years of waiting, Roosevelt finally took action and ordered the Office of Scientific Research and Development to investigate the possibility of creating an atomic weapon. A year later, in June 1942, the Corps Engineers Manhattan District was assigned the task of constructing many pilot plants, laboratories, and manufacturing facilities for the development of a nuclear weapon, under the code name Manhattan Project. With the Nazis already years ahead in research, did the United States even stand a chance? My name is Andrew Buluya, and you're watching The Manhattan Project. September 1942, Brigadier General Leslie R. Groves, located in Manhattan, New York, is put in charge of all military activities and pushes for absolute secrecy of the Manhattan Project. Scientists all over the country worked isolated and away from each other. But in order for the United States to quickly create a nuclear weapon, lots of research and testing had to be done in order for it to be successful. On December 28, 1942, President Roosevelt authorized scientists to collaborate on the project. Facilities were established in isolated areas in Los Alamos, New Mexico, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and Hanford, Washington for research and testing. In January 1943, Groves appointed physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer as the head of the laboratory in Los Alamos, New Mexico. Later on in 1943, a combined policy committee was set up with Canada and Great Britain to cooperate on research and testing. Scientists were tasked with the job of producing explosive materials and making it suitable for use in an actual weapon. By splitting atoms, they could create the most powerful weapon known to mankind. The process of this explosion is known as nuclear fission. When a heavy atomic nucleus such as uranium or plutonium is split, it releases a mass amount of energy and produces neutrons. The neutrons trigger more atoms to split, causing a fission chain reaction that releases enormous amounts of nuclear energy. Creating explosive materials was no easy task for the scientists. Uranium-235 had to be separated from its isotope, uranium-238, by physical means. Under Ernest Orlando Lawrence, the University of California, Berkeley, created an electromagnetic process. And under Harold C. Urey, Columbia University developed a diffusion process to physically separate uranium-235, both requiring lots of electricity. These methods were taken to the facility at Oak Ridge, Tennessee, where uranium-235 was mass-produced. Plutonium-239 could only be produced with one method. Under the direction of Arthur Holly Compton, the University of Chicago produced plutonium-239 through transmutation in a reactor pile of uranium-238. Leo Szilard and Enrico Fermi built the first nuclear reactor at the facilities in Hanford, Washington, where plutonium-239 was mass-produced. With nuclear isotopes produced in mass at the facilities in Washington and Tennessee, J. Robert Oppenheimer and his team in Los Alamos, New Mexico, worked on what was known as Project Y. It was here in New Mexico where the actual bombs were built and tested. Scientists were tasked with designing the bomb, bringing together a supercritical mass of explosive material, and timing the fission chain reaction to create the explosion at the right moment. Project Y went on to produce Little Boy, a gun assembly uranium-235 bomb, and Fat Man, an implosion-type plutonium-239 bomb. However, the use of the bombs were put to a halt. On April 12, 1945, President Roosevelt died and Harry S. Truman was put in office, but he had no idea the Manhattan Project existed until he became president because it was kept a secret. Despite realizing the atomic bomb was a terrible force for destruction, Truman and his advisors determined that it would save American lives. At 5.30 a.m. on July 16, 1945, the first atomic bomb, a plutonium bomb nicknamed Trinity, 
was detonated on top of a steel tower at a site on the Almogordo Air Base in New Mexico. With an equivalent of 15,000 tons of TNT, a shockwave of intense light and heat was emitted, followed by a huge mushroom cloud of fire and smoke. Because the cloud could be seen miles away, a story was made to cover up, explaining that a huge ammunition dump had exploded in the middle of the desert. With the Germans becoming less of a threat and nearing surrender after sustaining heavy losses in Europe, the bombs became less of a necessity. The only other threat was the Japanese, as the consensus between US military leaders was that the Japanese would fight to the end. On July 26, 1945, President Truman and other Allied leaders gave the Japanese an ultimatum in the Potsdam Declaration, demanding them to unconditionally surrender or face complete and utter destruction. The Japanese seemed to ignore the warning and gave no remarks to surrender. Truman, anxious to avoid Japanese invasion and bring war to a decisive end, took action, hoping the bombs would persuade the Japanese to surrender. At 8.15 a.m. on August 6, 1945, a B-29 bomber named Enola Gay flew over Hiroshima, Japan and dropped Little Boy, the uranium bomb, destroying up to 5 square miles and killing 140,000 people. With still no surrender, Fat Man, the plutonium bomb would drop three days later over Nagasaki, Japan, destroying more than 3 square miles and killing about 70,000 people. On August 10, no longer able to wage war or defend themselves, Japan submitted to the Potsdam Declaration by unconditionally surrendering. But what if the Manhattan Project never existed? To answer this question, let's go over the positive and negative effects of the Manhattan Project. On the positive side, science, physics, engineering, and the military made major advancements in a short period. Ernest Orlando Lawrence and Harold C. Urey, along with their teams, created two different ways of separating radioactive isotopes uranium-235 and 238 by physical means. Arthur Hawley Compton and his team produced plutonium-239 through transmutation in a reactor pile of uranium-238. And as a result, Leo Szilard and Enrico Fermi built the first nuclear reactor. J. Robert Oppenheimer and Project Y engineered ways to activate fission chain reactions at specified times and developed implosion and gun assembly bombs. The U.S. beat the Nazis to the development of the nuclear weapon and eventually ended the war quicker. In the long term, nuclear fission technology perfected by the Manhattan Project has since been used as a basis for power generators, medical imaging systems such as MRI machines, and radiation therapy for certain cancers. However, the atomic bomb itself had a negative effect. Over 200,000 Japanese were affected from the bombings in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Over 100,000 were killed instantly, 95% from burns and the rest from falling debris. Those not killed suffered from radiation poisoning, eventually causing the death of many within the following months. Life had to start over because well over half of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were destroyed. Roosevelt originally put $6,000 for research of the nuclear weapon, but by the end of the project over $2.2 billion had been spent, which in today's economy is $24.4 billion. And just to remember, before the war, the United States had just gone through the Great Depression. In the long run, the Manhattan Project gave other countries access to nuclear power, giving them the opportunity to develop nuclear weapons that are more powerful, which could pose a threat to the whole world. If the Manhattan Project never existed, I still don't think the Nazis would have developed a nuclear weapon. Many of the top European scientists, including Albert Einstein, had fled to the United States, and the Nazis' nuclear project was left very unorganized. The Nazis also took a heavy blow when Norwegian resistance fighters sabotaged their hydroelectric plants, where heavy water was being produced for a nuclear weapon in the future. The Nazis went on to sustain heavy losses in Europe and were ready to surrender. The important technological advancements in science, physics, engineering, and the military also wouldn't have taken place without the Manhattan Project. Nuclear fission technology still would have been developed, but it would have developed years later and it probably would have taken longer. World War II also would have taken six months to a year longer, and the US and Russia would have invaded all the Japanese islands. The Japanese were pretty much already defeated, but were not going to surrender because they thought it was embarrassing. Japan was ready for suicide before the atomic bomb convinced them to surrender. But with no atomic bomb, they placed their final hope in kamikaze. Over one million Americans would have been killed, and the Japanese would cease to exist. The Manhattan Project has left a big impact on how history has played out and how the world is today. If scientists had not escaped Europe to the United States, the Nazis could have had a nuclear weapon in their hands. 
the Manhattan Project was never approved, the war would have taken up to a year longer, over 1 million Americans would have died, and the Japanese would no longer exist. Even though $2 billion was spent on the Manhattan Project, I think that it was worth the price of 250,000 lives to save over 1 million lives and a whole country. I'm your host, Andrew Baruya, and this has been The Manhattan Project.